you're going to go fishing, you know, when you go fishing, you know, you got to have your favorite fishing hat. Thank you. you got to have your fishing hat on. And then you gotta have you got to have a fishing pole. That's your fishing pole. There. Now, let's see. i got my hat and i got my fishing pole. Seems like I'm missing something. What am I missing?
and the, the men, they said, somebody's causing this. So they, back then they cast lots to see who was, in, who, who was the cause of this, and it fell on Jonah. And they, they asked Jonah, what did you do to make your God so mad that he's about to destroy all of us? And Jonah told them that he was a preacher and that God had told him to go to Nineveh and he had disobeyed. He was actually running from God. And they said, well, what are we going to do? And Jonah said, well, you just throw me into the sea and the sea will stop raging. But you know what, boys and girls? These men were more noble than Jonah was. They didn't want to do that. So they kept rowing and rowing and trying hard to get to land, but they couldn't do it. And so finally they saw God and said, God, don't, don't blame us for this. You're the one that sent the sea. And so finally they took Jonah up and threw him overboard. And the Bible says God had prepared a great fish. Now another place in Matthew it says Jonah was in the belly of a whale. So we see a whale. Now boys and girls, how, how big is a whale? Do you know how big a whale is? You know what boys and girls? The blue whale is the biggest whale. If you put them, if you took old blue here, he's a blue whale, and you stuck his nose way up front here, clear up to the, up there, and you start walking, and you would go way back here, and you'd go clear to the back of the church, and you'd go through the doors back here, and you'd go through the foyer, and downstairs, and his tail would still stick out the back door. 98 feet. And he can weigh up to 180 tons. Now, that's like, uh, uh, that's like, you know these big trucks on the road? You see these big semi-trucks on the road? That whale would weigh as much as six of them. Six big semi-trucks. That's how much that thing weighs. Now, you think if I caught one on my hook, I could hold him? No. No, no probably not, could I? No. They're big. Boys and girls, we see that God prepared this fish, and this fish swallowed up Jonah. He went down in the belly of the whale, and the Bible said he was there for three days. Because you see, he had disobeyed God. And you know what? I can imagine all those three days that God sent every kind of slimy thing that he could think of for that whale to eat. And he was eating the slimiest seaweed, and he's probably eating all kinds of sardines, the stinkiest of fish. And oh, it was nasty down there. But you know why Jonah was there? Jonah realized he had, he had disobeyed God. And he prayed to God and asked God to forgive him. And after three days, the Bible says God talked to the whale. Now, how many of you have ever been sick? How many of you have ever been thrown up? Do you notice that the food you ate before you threw up doesn't taste near as good when it comes up? Huh? Yeah. Kind of nasty, isn't it? Kind of stinks, leaves a bad taste in your mouth. Well, you know what? The Bible says that after three days, God told that whale, he made that whale sick. And that whale went to the shore and vomited Jonah up. He didn't just spit him out, he vomited him up. So now Jonah's not only been in a whale three days, but he's all covered with vomit. Don't you think he smells really good? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, boy. You'd want to sit next to him on the bus, wouldn't you? A hot day. Yeah. Oh, man. He probably jumped back in the ocean and tried to wash off a little bit as soon as he could. But then, boys and girls, you know what? God spoke to Jonah again. He said, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh and tell these people that they need to repent. Now, Jonah had learned his lesson. He said, okay, I'm going to go. And so Jonah went, and he, he went through this city. The Bible says it was a city of three days' journey. It was a huge city. And Jonah went through it and he told him that, hey, if you don't repent in 40 days, God is going to destroy this city. And boys and girls, you know what? The people repented. They asked God to forgive them. But you know what? Jonah wasn't very happy about that. In fact, Jonah, Jonah was very angry. And Jonah, Jonah prayed to God and he said, you know, God, I knew if I, and the reason I went to Tarshish is because I knew if I went and told them and they repented that you would forgive them. And he said he went and built him a little booth to sit down and see if God would go ahead and destroy the city. You see, Jonah still didn't want those people to be spared. But boys and girls, you know what? The thing was, Jonah didn't realize that those people weren't any worse than what he was. For you see, boys and girls, all of us are sinners. And all of us are evil. 
You see, back when Adam and Eve was back in the garden and, and they sinned, God placed a punishment upon sin. And he says, well, the wages of sin is death. And when Adam and Eve sinned, they died spiritually, but they also begin to die physically. And you and I right now, you know we're dying, all of us. Every day we live, we're closer to death. Once you're born, you're starting to die. Now, as young people, you think, boy, I've got a long time to live. Well, you don't know that. But we're all starting to die. Because that's what happened when, when, when man sinned. God began to, to he began to uh, carry out his judgment of death because of sin. And so God said all mankind, because the Bible says, wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. See, boys and girls, every one of you have sinned. But not only that, every one of you have sinned, every one of you were born a sinner. David said in the book of Psalms, he says, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin, and my mother conceived me. See, boys and girls, we're just like somebody that's been convicted of a crime. And we're sitting in prison waiting for the day when our sentence is going to be carried out. And the Bible talks about if we die in our sin, there's no, what they call it, it's what the Bible calls a second death. And that's when hell and death are cast into the lake of fire. And the Bible says this is the second death. That's God's final judgment. Boys and girls, that's what all of us face because we've sinned. And the only way we could get out of that was for our sin to be paid for. Now, the only way we could pay for our sin was to die. But the problem was once we died, then it was too late. So the only other way was for someone else to pay for our sin. And that's what Jesus did. When Jesus came and he was born of a virgin and he lived a sinless life on earth and then he died, not because he had sinned, but because we had sinned. And he took our place and he paid for our sin. And then God says if we'll accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, he'll forgive our sins and he'll restore us to the place where we were before Adam sinned. We'll become children of God. It's like a pardon. God gives us a pardon for the things that we've done. Not that we deserve it. It's not something that we do. We can't do anything because God says all our righteousness are filthy rags. Boys and girls, you can't be good enough to please God. See, God had to do everything for us. And that's what Jesus done on the cross. And Jesus said, if you'll repent of your sins, and that means change of, change of mind, you realize that, hey, you do deserve punishment from God. Because you are a sinner and you ask Jesus Christ to save you, God has said He'll make you His child. But boys and girls, each one of us have to do that. It's not something we do. We don't join the church to do that. We don't get baptized to do that. We ask Jesus Christ to come into our heart and save us. And you see, when that city of Nineveh, when they repented and asked Jesus to forgive them, God forgive them. And boys and girls, God will do the same for you today. When you ask Jesus Christ, give you your sins and come into your heart and save you. He'll do that. But you see, each one of those people in Nineveh had to do that. The king, he said, well, everybody needs to put on sackcloth and ashes. But just putting on sackcloth and ashes didn't, didn't save them. Each person had to repent. And boys and girls, you and I, each one of us, have to ask Jesus Christ to come into our hearts and save us. Doesn't make any difference what mom and daddy do. Doesn't make any difference what church you go to. Doesn't make any difference uh, what school you go to. Each one of us has to do that in our hearts. We have to realize that we're sinners. And then to God that we're sinners and ask Jesus Christ to in our hearts. And we're, in that second, we're receiving God's pardon for our sins. <coughs> He's promised that to us if we'll do that. Boys and girls, if you're here tonight and you haven't asked Jesus Christ in your heart, maybe tonight you didn't, maybe always before you didn't think about being a sinner. He thought, hey, I'm just, I'm just a young person. I haven't done that much bad. You know what? One time we was talking to a lady, and she said, well, she wasn't a sinner because she had never stolen anything or she hasn't murdered anybody. Boys and girls, you know, sometimes people think, well, sin, boy, that's something really bad. I'd have to do something really bad to be a sinner. No, we're born sinners. We have an old sin nature, and we constantly sin. And so it doesn't make a difference 
how old you are or what you've done in life, you're a sinner. And unless you accept Jesus Christ your Savior, then you will be uh, facing the judgment of God when you die. But you see, we can escape that by asking Jesus Christ into our hearts. And He's promised to make us His child and to, to forgive our sins and to uh, make us righteous like His Son Jesus because, you see, we put on Jesus' righteousness. We don't become righteous. Jesus covers our sins. And he did that when he paid for them on the cross. When he died on the cross, he shed his blood. The Bible says uh, the life of the flesh is in the blood. It speaks, it speaks of death. It says without the, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. That word remission means cleansing, forgiving of sins. You see what's because Jesus had to die. He had to pay for our sins. He had to pay for your sins and my sins on the cross. So that we could we could have a pardon from God. That sin had to be paid for. And if you're here today and you've never asked Jesus Christ to be your Savior, then if you were to die in that condition, then you'd have to face the judgment of God. Boys and girls, if you've never done that, we'd like to give you the opportunity tonight to realize and to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. And we're going to bow our heads in just a moment, and then uh, we'll have Mrs. Haggard play. And if you would like to. Uh, Come forward and we'll have someone take the Bible and show you how that you might know for sure that you're going to heaven. If you've never asked Jesus Christ to be your Savior, that's the most important thing you'll ever do. You see, God spared Nineveh because they, they believed God and asked, him, asked for his forgiveness. And God does the same for us. And God does the same thing for Jonah. Jonah just forgot. Jonah thought, well, these people don't deserve to be saved. Boys and girls, none of us deserve to be saved, but God wants all of us to be saved. The Bible says God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God loves you, and He wants you to be. He wants you to be reconciled to Him. He wants you to, once again, be in His family. The sin has separated us, and Jesus paid for that sin. And when you accept Him as your Savior, then, then God can restore us to the place where He wants us to be.